And it's so important that we understand that. That it, it, it's for doctrine, it's for reproach and correction. See, the Word of God will correct you. The Word of God will bam! The Word of God will hit us hard. As much as it will rebuke us, it will strengthen us. See, correction, we need correction all the time. There's something bad. Correction is good. If you don't develop a healthy swing, you're going to swing all retarded. <laughs> so they correct you to have a better swing. If you throw a punch and you think you're a bad boxer, and you're not throwing the punch right, and they don't correct you, you're out. You throw a lousy punch. If you're wrestling, like somebody wrestles, he goes and he wrestles, and they're, they're correcting a lot of things, but it's to help them to be a better wrestler. So the correction is not to hurt us, but to help us. Come on, it's to help us to be successful. Help us, amen, to be fruitful. So if we ain't got no fruit, it's because we're not allowing the Word of God to correct us. It's funny how we look at the Word, and the Word will reflect us how we look. And sometimes we think nothing's wrong with us. And they don't even know what I'm talking about. You think, you, you, we look at the word like we look at a mirror when you're fat. <laughs> this way up. Oh, you hear me though. When you're a little fluffy, you look at the mirror from this way up. But if you're back up, oh, there it is. The mirror will show you what you really are. Mirror won't lie unless it's one of those carnival mirrors. <laughs> but the word of God is like that. It will show you who you are, where we lack, what we need to fix, what we need to address in our life. Come on, somebody. There is the word of God. It is profitable. Woo, man. And it goes on and says these words. It says uh, that the men of God, not let's say men. It didn't say women, it said men. Because if a man fixes himself in wealth, his wife will. Oh, oh, let me say that again. If a man fixes himself, his wife will. Yeah. She loves you, but she don't respect you no more. Yeah. She'll love you, and she'll love you like Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> she loves you, but she loses respect. Women can get amen. Yeah. Women, you know what I'm talking about. You don't love me, you love me. Oh my God. That was a Christian commercial. <laughs> All the women owe me five dollars. Hallelujah. <laughs> he goes on and says these words that the men of God may be complete. The word complete means this, and the Hebrew means this: skilled in every aspect, accomplished without lack, finished. Listen to that: finished, complete, skilled in every aspect. He's the, oh man, look at it, I want to read it again, uh, that the men of God may be complete, guys, skilled in every aspect, skilled as a believer, skilled as the leader, skilled as a pastor, come on, skilled, amen, as the man of God we're called to be, he said, when we're in the word, when we are in the word, it completes us, it completes us, we are without lack, there's nothing lacking. We are finished. Look at what he says. What I put in you, you got the ability to finish the job. Oh, you can finish what you started. You can finish what you're called to do. You can finish what God put inside you. That calling to God is unrevocable because I have not changed my mind about you. I'm not done with you. I'm just getting started. But you got to get me in my word. You got to get in my word. You got to get in that word. Listen, I don't know how to read. I don't know how to write. I ain't the sharpest knife in the, in the drawer. I'm not even in the drawer. I'm in the garage. But when you need that knife, I'll come out and help you. See, I couldn't read or write when my God said that. I would read the Bible and be like, in, 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 <laughs> next. <laughs> I, I didn't know how to read, I, I didn't know how to write, I, 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 I didn't know nothing, but when I started reading the word, God began to show me how to read. See, so a lot of us, the reason why we don't read, because
because we don't know how to read. And I've got reaches in the foolish things of the world to consult the Bible. And, and God begins to get the foolish things and He changes them. But He goes, I want to fill you with some word. There's enough foolishness in you for all of us. But I need to put some word in you. And that's how we begin to get in the word and God begins to sharpen you. God begins to sharpen you. God begins to strengthen you. God begins to build you. Because a lot of men, we, men, we have complexes. We don't say it, but we, we act like we're tough. We got complexes. We deal with complexes. That's why we need other men to coach us. Oh, you don't hear me. The women, you guys can talk like, I, 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 like nothing. But men, we need to be coached. I thank God for the man of God in my life. I thank God for my pastor who coached me, who spoke to me. And you only need to be thankful for the man of God in your life. Great players that we have today, the NBA, the ABA, the BBA, and all that crazy is, is because of the great coach. A great coach. A great coach brought out the potential. Brought out the greatness. So I'm telling you today, I'm, I'm, I'm watching it all today, that we need to get in that word, back in that word. And regardless of how you feel, regardless of what's going on, all your complexes, the word of God begins to take up those complexes. The word of God begins to take up all the limits off you. You take all this and all that off you. Because it's the word of God. Come on, back to the word of God. Back to prayer. Back to the basics. It's the basics that pierce the enemy. It's the basics that pierce darkness. It's the word. It's prayer. Come on, somebody. Back to our faith. Back to trusting God again like never before. People ask me, Pastor, how, how do you do it? Listen to my pastor. God's on my side. I know that. He's my savior. He's my deliverer. But thank God for the coach. Thank God for my pastor. Can someone say amen? I thank God for that. I thank God for, thank God for listening. I thank God for his word. It's a simple gospel. It's a simple, the gospel is simple. It, 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 you know, when you're going through hell, like I'm going to talk about right now, all of us, we face things. Can someone say amen? We face things. We, 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 we are faced with troubles. Now, what does the Word of God say? Any man in trouble, let him pray. The Word of God tells us, get into prayer. The Word of God tells you what to do in the midst of trouble. He tells us the Word is so laid out for us, guys. It's so laid out for us. But we're looking for a realm of Word. The oracles of God. The Greek and the Hebrew and the Arabic. Thank God for all that. But when all hell breaks loose and your wife wants nothing to do with you and your kids tell you to take it down the street. <laughs> back to the word. Come on, somebody, back to the word. For me, my house shall serve the Lord. Back to the word that you're an overcomer, that you're a mighty man, that you're a mighty woman. Back to the word that you're no longer the tail but the head. Back to the word. Back to the word. Amen. See, we, 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 we go through troubles, we go through hardships. Oh, man, I was depressed on every side. <laughs> if you've never been through nothing, I can't trust you. <laughs> can't trust nobody that's never been through nothing. And when you've been through something, you already show me what you're going to do, you're going to run back to mama. So what you go through shows you two things. It'll show you who the real, the real you is. Oh, yeah. right, come on. Trouble will show you who you really are. Someone's going to get jumped, everybody takes off with you. What happened? <laughs> Your real friends show their colors. I'll never forget it. When I got jumped by, it was like about 15 dudes. And it was me, it was 10 of us, and there was only three of us left to jump fighting. And the guy who was driving the car, I was, in, I was like 15 years old. And the guy that was driving the car who got me jumped was my wife's uncle. <laughs> Years went by and I started talking to this beautiful lady right there, sexy mama. Hallelujah. Shut up, little shit. Then. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm talking to her and I see the guy come and I see the tag dude's almost saying, hey, now, I got jumped by a bunch of fools for your neighborhood. And he's all, yeah, where? He's all, over there in the desert. He's all, was it a blue truck? He thought I was going to do something. No, man. I said, yeah, thank you, Jesus. He's all, man, I know he's saved. <laughs> he wasn't even saved. But God touched him. 
God touched them. All of a sudden, he started coming to our church. Later on, we started casting years went by. He started coming. God touched him. Now he's in. Now he got away from everybody. Now he's in Arizona. <laughs> but I tell you, man, God is a good God. Come on, God is a good God. God, God, God knows. God knows what we go through. The real you always pops up. How about when pain comes? When pain, man, we're some of the biggest babies, man. We get our children want to make them for a week. Boy! Girls get a C-section, and next day they're working. <laughs> Carrying all the kids. They get a, they get a liver test back they are. Come on, come on, let's put them in the dishes and just all really. We get a sniffles, we're in bed. I'm sorry, but I'm just, you know. That's why God's always addressing the man in the Bible. Because men were too much. No, Pastor, I'm not too loco. No, 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 no. You're loco, right? How about discouragement? When we face discouragement, we get discouraged. We, we're like, we go through things and we're like, God, where are you? What's going on? I don't understand what's happening, God. I, I, I thought that everything was supposed to work perfectly. I thought when I started pastoring that everybody was going to start coming. <laughs> I thought everything was going to work out. I, it's my, they told me it was my city. <laughs> they Lord, and all these things that we, all these weird thoughts that we have. And God said, yes, of course. Let's get in your word. Your word is going to sharpen you. Come on, the word is going to sharpen you. The word is going to cut away some stuff. The word is going to get away all that leftover junk that's all over us. We face things in our marriage. We, we face things in our personal life. We face things within our churches. And God is saying, look at my word will cut away all the impurities. My word will make you a man of God. Come on, amen. We, 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 what's funny about us, we use that word, oh, I'm a man of God, lightly, like nothing. I'll never forget when I first got saved, they told me, it takes 20 years to make a man of God. Well, I'm 20, I'm one of 26, and I'm still trying to figure it out. Someone say work. It takes work. It takes work. It takes work. And that word will get in you. And that word will cut it away. And that word will make you without lack. And that word will give you the strength to finish what you started as a husband, as a wife, as a believer, as a son, as a daughter. God will give you what you need. But we got to get in His word. We, get it, we, got, we need to get back and trust in His word. Get back and trust in His word. His word, you find out who you really are. Listen closely, church, please. When we get back into our word and trust it and believe it, then we start piercing darkness. Come on, somebody. We, we start piercing darkness because his word brings life. Ooh. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It says these words, and here's, here's, here's the powerfulness of the word. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night we should have it in our mouth and we should be in it day and night not once a week not on church days we are guilty church we are guilty and God is saying look if you want to be successful and if you want to be powerful and you want to be impacting 